Everybody, welcome back to What the Flick. I am Matt Achity. That is Alonzo Doraldi. That is Christy Lemire. They are going to talk about a documentary that's in theaters called uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor. I haven't had a chance to see it yet, but they've seen it. And Alonzo will tell you about it. So if you didn't grow up watching Mr. Rogers, uh, Fred Rogers kind of revolutionized the idea of children's television and how it should work and what, should, what it should be and what it should communicate to children. And this movie is a really beautiful uh, recapturing of what his show was about and how he was able to sort of communicate directly to kids, uh, to young children on the, on the, via the TV screen and make them feel appreciated and accepted. And uh, it's, if you did grow up watching Mr. Rogers, this is a very moving experience. Take a look. A television program for children made its unauspicious debut on station WQED in Pittsburgh. Its host, Fred Rogers. Mr. Rogers? Yeah. I want to tell you something. What would you like to tell? I like you. I like you, my dear. Thank you very much for telling me that. Low production values, simple set, unlikely star. Yet, it worked. Hello. I've always felt that I didn't need to put on a funny hat or jump through the hoop to have a relationship with a child. He was always trying to get a message across in every show. A week on death. What does assassination mean? On divorce. Some people get married and after a while they're so unhappy that they don't want to be married anymore. He was radical. I know everyone says that, but he was radical. They didn't want black people to come and swim in their swimming pools. My being on the program was a statement for Fred. So the question is not, did you cry, but rather, how many times <sighs> and when? <laughs> In the first five minutes of the movie, like they they snap open this wooden crate and they bring out the trolley, uh -huh. and that was it. That, Were you a was, fan as a kid? Totally. Me too. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, you know, because this show started in 1968, and I was born in 1967. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, my earliest memories of television are watching this show. Yeah. And Sesame Street, they both came on around the same time in the late 60s. Well, and I think part of it too is there wasn't a lot of other kids' TV to watch right. when you were staying home. PBS. Right? Yeah. right, I mean, you'd have- Gilligan's Island right. reruns. And then Saturday morning, you'd have cartoons, but yeah. it's, you know, I mean, it's the old joke, like, you stay home sick from school when we were kids. It's like, oh, daytime TV, I gotta go back right. to school. Are you kidding? It's game shows. Game shows. Game shows galore. <laughs> It's amazing. You Family did it all Feud wrong. and Match Game. That was good. <laughs> Tattletales. But, but yeah, but like we would watch a lot of, of Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street, and then eventually, yes, Brady Bunch and Gilligan's yeah. Island. But, the Electric Company. Too. Yes, and Zoom. <laughs> but this movie does a really great job of sort of illuminating the contradiction of him, the paradox of this show, and how nothing about it should make sense as far as being a hit. Yes. And and why it struck a chord with so many kids. Yeah, I cried at a couple of different moments in which. He makes people who have felt like they are disenfranchised or felt like they're on the fringes, and he's he's made them feel accepted and loved and valued. And seen. Yes, yeah. and one, one is with a, a young boy who's in a wheelchair, mm. and one is with um, Francois Clemens, who we see there in, in the tail end of the trailer. Oh, talking yeah, about that how, whole history is fascinating. Talking about how he was, you know, he was gay, he is gay, and um, how the world at that point, in Mr. Rogers' estimation, was not ready for him to be out. But Mr. Rogers loved him for who he was, and that made Francois Clemens just sob because this man was like a father figure to him. Yeah. When his own family maybe wasn't necessarily that, uh, th that The part late in the film where after Mr. Rogers is given that commencement address and the woman talks about how when she was a child and she was sick and she missed a lot of school and how like she really mm -hmm. kind of the bonding with him and, and she burst into right. tears, you know, in her like regalia holding her diploma. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. so this is from director Morgan Neville yes. who did 20 Feet from Stardom. Which, and Best of Enemies. Right, right, which won the Academy Award, 20 Feet from Stardom won the Academy yes. Award for Best Documentary Feature about unsung backup singers and how important they are to you know the, all the music that you love. Um, so again, takes kind of a an intimate, kind of clear-eyed approach mm. to a topic that you think you know. I, it's funny, I remember he, he, he showed Best of Enemies at Outfest and mm -hmm. I remember asking him at the end of the Q&A, so what are you working on now? He goes, oh, I'm doing a documentary about Mr. Rogers. Oh. I was like, <gasps> Like, yes, I remember I you coming back and talking about that. I want to see that. that right now. Yeah, I remember you, I distinctly remember you coming back and saying, oh my, like sharing it, you were so excited. <laughs> the only thing with this is that this is in no way a warts and all depiction. There are no Rogers. warts, that's the thing. Yeah. Like he's, we don't have celebrities like him anymore. Like there's no scandal, there's no thing that he said that is like, you know, kind of hung around no his neck. No tweet, yeah. no racist <laughs> tweets. So I was thinking about that, right? Because as we were watching this, and I'm glad you brought that up. Do you think, not to turn this into a completely different discussion, but 
could someone like Fred Rogers maintain that level, maintain that aura and in today's wildly overexposed culture that every, seemingly every celebrity gets thrust into whether they want to or not? It seemed that he really did walk the talk. I mean, he was ordained yeah. as a Presbyterian minister. Yes. And while his show was not necessarily religious, he took the tenets of goodness and kindness and yeah, charity he's the and good generosity. Kind of Christian. <laughs> right, and he and he imbued them in, in the show and in everything it, he did. His yeah. wife talks about how, not, how neither he nor her were sort of raised to ever show anger. And then they cut to one of the sons saying that it would, it would be at the dinner table. And if he was gonna say something that was very decidedly not Mr. Rogers, he would say it in the voice of Lady Elaine Fairchild. I, that is creepy. That. <laughs> that's the one creepy thing in the whole movie. But I like but I like that idea. Like that's his outlet. You know, that's how he can say the things that Mr. Rogers right. would never say. You right. Know. And yeah, so there's nothing really negative about him. I mean, he was very he was controlling of the image and no. of the brand, and understandably so, like who wouldn't be? He created this empire. Sure. And so uh, he wanted to ma maintain it. Yeah, so I was I was quite moved by this. It's it's a lovely film and a reminder of the power of someone being mm. kind and generous in the media. I'm trying to think, is there anybody who's even tantamount to that now in the children's realm, in the anything entertainment realm? And it's hard to even imagine, no one as you say, mind. maintaining that level of, of purity and just being adored like that and, and justifiably so. Well, know? there is, and they do address the whole thing when Fox News decided that they were gonna pillory him for creating a generation of entitled people because he told children that they were, that they, <laughs> that they mattered. You you're know, all special. That you're special, <laughs> like, eh. Right, that, uh, yeah, that, that, a made up bite, non story. Bite me non controversy. Everybody yeah. gets a trophy, which is not at all no. what Mr. Rogers no. was about. No, 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 no. Yeah, and then um, since there has been, uh, there's an animated show on PBS called Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. Yes. And yeah. I guess so the Tiger on Mr. Rogers' name was Daniel Tiger, and that was like the original puppet that Mr. Rogers did. And that's a cute show. Nicholas watched that when he was young, and there are cute little songs to teach you lessons, mm -hmm. and it's the same characters. There's still a neighborhood of make-believe, so and, his legacy and, carries on. And PBS has put out a DVD of a lot of the original Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood episodes, so okay. if you wanna either revisit them or find out what the fuss was about, you have a chance to take a look at them. Yeah, I brought my kid, and he laughed at me for crying. He, he likes when I cry in movies. He kept looking at me like, Mommy, have you cried yet? Uh, <laughs> I have the one recently who's closest to that, Paddington. Yeah. Paddington, Paddington as, right a, as a celebrity. As yeah. a, Paddington <laughs> as a movie experience is in that same and, mindset. Yes. And it creating messy tears. Gentle and lovely. So what's your number, Alonzo? Nine and a half. Uh, yeah, I will say nine. Yeah, so 9.3 from us, and it's super high on the tomato meter because who dares not like this movie? So uh, go check it out. Bye.